Hello, today we're learning about succession, and our learning target for this podcast is that we will understand how one community is naturally naturally replaced by another community. And here's some vocabulary for us. Um, what This is just mostly review. A population are the individuals of the same species inhabiting an area. So for example, in our schoolyard, we could talk about the population of squirrels. And a community are all the individuals of all the species inhabiting an area. So for a schoolyard, that would include the squirrels, it would include all the insects, all the plants, everything that's alive in the schoolyard. And an ecosystem is the interaction between the community and the environment. So that would include the community of the squirrels and all the plants, all the insects. And it would also include the environmental factors like the climate, the the amount of rainfall, the temperature, just the climate. It would also include the amount of sunlight that reaches, say, in the courtyard. It would, uh, so all of the non-living factors, all the abiotic factors. And the definition of succession is it's, a, it's the process of a community which is gradually replaced by another community. And there are basically two different kinds of succession. And we'll be learning about both of them in this podcast. Primary succession, we start with nothing that's alive. And that can be caused by like a volcanic eruption um, or, or say, um, a receding glacier. In secondary succession, there you start with a disturbance like a forest fire. Now here are some pictures that I took on a trip to Alaska. And if you look uh, in the distance, you should be able to see a glacier. And the sign 1951. That tells us that, that in 1951, this was where the glacier ended. And uh, basically, the world is getting warmer, and that's causing the glaciers to retreat. And this provided me a unique opportunity in that I was, as I was walking away from the glacier, each step that I took, that area had a longer amount of time since the glacier was there. So by traveling away from the glacier, that was also traveling in time. The further back I went, I would see the future of where I, w where I just was. Here's the glacier close up. And uh, it, the glacier is basically a river of ice. And it's also a conveyor belt in that it dumps a lot of stuff uh, that, that was on it, that it built up in front of it. And as you can see, there's not much or anything living under the glacier or when the glacier, glaciers just retreated there's not much alive there at all so this is a good example of primary succession and here we see the first community and you see there's not much there we just have there some mosses and over here are some lichens which can also grow and lichens are a dual species they're both um, algae and algae and uh, fungi and they help each other and one thing about these two types of species is that they don't require any soil they can grow on bare rock so here's our first community that we're looking at as we move away from the glacier uh, there's they have no soil in this uh, type of communities um, so only plants without roots can grow and always in the first community you have pioneer organisms growing and the pioneer organisms are the first organisms, first species, that can settle in an area. And as time goes by, and this time can last in terms of decades, or it can last centuries or eons, but as they die, a thin layer of soil starts to develop. And once you start getting this thin layer of soil, then plants with roots can grow. And over here we see some herbs and some grasses growing, and it's just a few feet away. And a few more feet away, as the soil gets deeper, then uh, we see that this community, uh, this new community, has more has taken hold, uh, much more so. So here's uh, a community of grasses and herbs. So a thin layer of soil allows these grasses and herbs to grow. And if there's already soil in place, this is the primary community. And gradually decaying plants cause the soil to thicken. And when it becomes thick enough, we end up with some bushes. And there I am, a little bit younger. I've got uh, more hair on top, and I'm not wearing a beard. Um, but uh, that's me. And 
um, they are more for more in terms of scale. You can see that I'm still pretty close to the glacier, and this these are bushes. So we have a thicker soil, and or time allows the bushes to grow, and the grasses die because they need a lot of sunlight, and they and the shade from the bushes kills them. And as decaying matter and weathering rocks, the thick the soil becomes thicker and thicker. And as that happens, you end up with a new community coming up. And uh, well, that's still bushes. Um, here's the next one. These are trees. And uh, this is the first tree community. And the soil becomes thick enough. Trees will grow, and these will shade the bushes to death. These trees need to direct sunlight to grow when they are saplings. And the type of trees that we saw there in Alaska are not the same that are here in New York. As you go to different areas, the, success, the process of succession um, will change. Or the, or actually, the, the process is the same, it's just the communities will be different. And there we have deciduous trees or trees that just lose their leaves. Here in New York, we have evergreen trees like pine and spruce, which are the first ones to come up. And uh, here's some more of the community. As we go further away, you see the trees get taller and taller. And you got a nice understory coming in, too. And what happens is that as this community gets older, the new trees that come up, the next generation, can't be the first generation because the trees in the first generation, they need a lot of sunlight. But there isn't enough sunlight. So the next generation trees that come up are the ones that can survive in that shade. And, and, and that brings us to the second or second tree community, which is usually the last one, which is the climax community. And as and you see here, the trees are very different. These are evergreen trees, which is the climax community in Alaska. And this community, the climax community, is a stable community. It's the last one in the sequence. And uh, in New York, the climax community are deciduous trees. And these are trees that lose their leaves in the fall. And uh, these tend to be things like uh, tulip trees or oak trees, beech trees. If you go to Alley Pond Park in Queens, then you can get a fairly good idea of what a climax community in New York looks like, or if you're in Manhattan, Inwood Park is the best one. What the climax community is depends on the climate. Here it's deciduous trees. If you go to a desert, uh, this is what you'll find, a lot of cacti, and also a lot of bare ground. Grasslands, uh, you'll find uh, mostly you find grasses, of course. They don't get too much beyond. And that can be due to the amount of rainfall, like in the prairies. Or in this case, it's so high up that you end up with, uh, like this is in the Rocky Mountains, it's so high up that very few trees can grow. Also, there's the opposite. We have tropical rainforests. And tundra, you basically have mosses and some grasses. Um, give an idea of perspective, you see the big rock, that big rock is just about as tall as our school. Next kind of succession is secondary succession, and this occurs when disturbance destroys the community. This can be a natural disturbance, like a forest fire, or it can be a human cost example, logging, where loggers come in and they chop down the forest. Um, the order is basically the same as primary succession, the difference could be where you begin. Here's an example of a disturbance. In 1988, there was a huge forest fire, and the fire, the fire is basically uh, the area was larger than some of the smaller states, and this lasted from this lasted from July through September. It basically, while they were fighting it, they weren't able to put it out entirely. It was finally the first snowfall that put it out. Following spring. Uh, we ended up we ended up with the pioneer community coming up, and and that basically was uh, fields, grasslands, and uh, lots and lots of wildflowers. Now here you see a similar community. This is just north of um, just north of Grand Canyon in the Kaibab Plateau. <coughs> Kaibab Plateau. And we had a lab that sort of went in the same area. And these are from two forest fires. The one on the left, uh, the forest fire was just a few months before. 
And on the right, it was it's eight years have gone by. And you go from basically nothing there but soil to grassland. Now here we're back in Yellowstone. And this is about 20 years later. And you can see here that the bush stage is basically skipped. You go straight from grassland to, um, to the climax forest, which is beginning to grow here. You see you've got the saplings of the lodgepole pine trees. And in, the lower, in this lower picture here, if you look in the background there, you, you'll see the, uh, that the forest fire was there and the trees are coming up. And in front, you've got a wholly different community where it's at climax. In the climax community, there is basically bacteria that can live in water that's near boiling. Next type of succession we need to know is uh, pond lake succession. And this pond, believe it or not, is actually in Queens. It's, um, it's an alley pond park, and if you ever want to see it, beautiful place to walk around it. It's um, about a block from the intersection of Northern Boulevard and the Cross Island Parkway. And here's the basic uh, succession. Next, how would you? And this type of question here is what you may need to do, like in a regent's exam. And what basically happens is that the pond slowly fills in and gets smaller and smaller, and it will turn into a swamp. And then eventually what will happen in the future is it'll go into a grassland and go through the whole sequence that we went through before, where eventually you end up with a forest. And here's what I just said. You've got swamp fleet gets filled in. So you've got a swamp, goes to a field, turns into bushes. Then you've got the coniferous fields and the climax community of the deciduous trees. Now here are some regions questions. And here's a typical question that you would see on most of the exams, where basically you're just asked to, you see this and you need to identify that it is succession. Um, random mutations is something you just get in genetics. Um, genetic engineering is also genetics, where uh, we'll, well, we'll get into those things in the spring. Um, direct harvesting we'll get into in the latter part of this unit. Not so important this, but basically just to identify this as succession. Usually the other things there are from something that's completely different. Here's another question you may see. Many years ago, a volcanic eruption killed many plants and animals on the island. Today the island looks much as it did before the eruption. Which statement is the best possible explanation for this? And this is one, another one where you identify succession. And um, altered ec ecosystems regain stability through the evolution of new plant species. Well, if it looks the same, it's not evolution. Destroyed environments can recover as the process of ecological succession. And that's what this is. You have to be able to identify that it is succession. Um, geographic barriers prevent the migration of animals to island habitats. If it, everything was destroyed and then it looks the same as it was before, it can't be that because it's preventing it. Destroyed ecosystems always return to their original state. And uh, that's actually not true. It could be... Think, it, I can imagine people changing things enough that it can't go back to its original state. Second type of question that you may see with the ecosystem is that you may have to put, you may see diagrams of the stages in succession, something like this, and it would be out of order and you would have to put it into order. Now here are the closing questions. Number one, what is succession? Two, what can cause primary succession? Three, what can cause secondary succession? Four, what is a pioneer species? And five, what is a climax community? And that concludes uh, this podcast, and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow with your answers to these five questions.